It's natural that there should be a mini electric variant. This little hatch lends itself to full battery motion and quick step EV pulling power. The driving range possible between charges isn't a particular strong point here, but it'll probably be fine for urban folk who'll appreciate this car's enthusiastic take on life. Market interest suggests that it could prove rather popular. It's curious that it took BMW's Mini brand so long to bring us an all-electric version of its iconic little hatch model. The Bavarians have, after all, been experimenting with battery-powered versions of this model for years. Mini E prototypes were first produced as long ago as 2008. Following that, it was always assumed that BMW's first battery-powered car would wear Mini badging. But time drifted on, Nothing happened, and in fact, it was the BMW i3, launched in 2016, that reached the EV market first. Since then, we've had an electrified Mini, the Countryman PHEV, but no full battery model, until spring 2020 and the launch of this car, the Mini Electric. So what's it like? Well, obviously, like no Mini you will have tried before, flicking this central starter tab at the base of the centre stack delivers a strange polyphonic sound, alerting you that the car's electrified powertrain is active. You're ready. It shoots away from rest with appropriate Mini and EV alacrity and a notable lack of wheel spin even in the wet. 37 miles an hour takes under 4 seconds and 62 miles an hour is accomplished in just 7.3 seconds. So we're talking near Mini Cooper S levels of performance, though as with all EVs the maximum speed is restricted, in this case to just 93 miles an hour. But then when was the last time you drove over 93 miles an hour? The car sits 18 millimetres higher off the road than a Cooper S to give the battery more clearance, but the centre of gravity is lower because more of the powertrain's mass, that's T-shaped and fitting beneath the back seats and along the transmission tunnel, is concentrated further down. Weight distribution is quite different to a normal Mini Hatch 2. The battery's bulk dictating a 54-46 front to rear ratio rather than the usual 60-40 split. To get the most from the torque of the 181 brake horsepower electric motor lifted directly from the BMW i3, you'll need to master the various driving modes. From a starting point of mid, you can either go eco with green, which frames the central screen in green, or green plus, which frames it in yellow and condemns you to a level of restricted throttle travel that really does feel slow. Or you can throw range caution to the wind and go all out with sport, which frames the display in red. Range, of course, is the elephant in the room here. It was always going to be with a battery of just 35.6 kilowatt hour in size, driving the powertrain, only 28.9 kilowatt hour, which is actually usable. To give you some perspective, with a Peugeot E208, the Vauxhall Corsa E, or the Renault Zoe ZE50, the battery is 50 kilowatt hours in size. Even the tiny new Fiat 500 EV has a battery of 42 kilowatt hour. Mini has managed to get the WLTP cycle to rate the range of the lithium ion cells at between 140 to 145 miles, but the reality is that you'll do well with normal give and take driving to get much over three figures in usual use. Close rivals, the Honda e and the Mazda MX-30 have similarly small batteries, so struggle in a similar way. But models like that EV Fiat 500 show that you can have fashion and range sensibility in a small package. Mini must try harder. But if you're urban based or have a second or third car, as most customers will, range issues might not matter much. You're still going to need to keep an eye on the various energy consumption displays though and decide whether you can cope with the high energy recovery setting that you can select via this toggle switch near the starter tab which maximizes brake regeneration, dramatically so to an extent that you'll hardly ever need to use the brake pedal. What else might you notice here? 
Well, if you're used to a combustion engine Mini, you'll immediately notice the 145 kilograms of extra weight this electric variant must carry about, especially through the bends. The car just isn't quite as chuckable as you'd normally expect it to be, though it's still far more fun to drive hard than any other small EV we've tried. More fun than any other EV full stop, come to think of it. Few cars of any kind can hold a cornering line more accurately. For many regulars, that'll matter. But if you're coming from a green pump fueled version of this hatch, you'll have to adjust to a firmer ride and slightly less feel some steering. Despite its limited top speed, cruising at or near the legal limit is quite comfortable in this Mini and obviously impressively quiet. You could certainly undertake longer journeys in reasonable comfort if the range permitted it, helped by an excellent and standard GPS system with a navigation map featuring a circle that indicates the car's range. When the route guidance starts, it displays the fastest and shortest route and also suggests a green route involving the lowest level of power consumption. The Mini Electric is though of course much more in its comfort zone around town where like all EVs it emits a strange low speed digital whir to alert pavement folk of its impending arrival. The Mini Electric is based on the same body shell as the three-door hatch with a number of specific differences. An embossed Mini Electric logo appears on the car's side scuttles as well as on the tailgate and the front radiator grille. The front grille, embellished here with energetic yellow finishing also applied to the mirror caps, features the hallmark hexagonal shape but is closed as the car requires no cooling. This also contributes to sleek aerodynamics, as do the enclosed undercarriage and the rear apron. Otherwise, all the visual cues that you'd expect to see on such a definitive mini model have been perfectly preserved. The clamshell bonnet, the upright windscreen, the blacked out pillars that create the floating roof, and the continuous band of chrome at the base of the glass house. All of it's present and correct. The power pack has been just about crammed in here beneath the bonnet. You can certainly see why a bigger battery simply wasn't possible. As we've already suggested, the visual changes over the standard car are of the detail sort, which means that unless you happen to notice this large charging flap in the rear driver's side flank, the dinky power packed profile remains completely familiar and as on the standard car comes with the no cost option of a roof that's either body colored, white or as in this case, black. There's plenty of wheel style choice too across various 16 and 17 inch designs. We've got these rather unusual 17 inch electric power rims here. And at the rear, well, this Mini Cooper S badge is a bit misleading, isn't it? It's there because Mini markets this car as a Cooper S rather than a Mini Electric in other countries. And the Oxford factory basically can't be bothered to take the badge off for the UK. As usual with the current mini hatch, you have to have these union flag style LED tail lamps. You might quite understandably feel that you don't need, reminding where the mini concept originally hails from, in which case you might be disappointed to hear that you have to have them. Get over that though, putting this little flourish down to just another touch of quirky character and you'll bond with it just fine. Let's pull back the frameless door and take a look inside. Where again differences over the normal mini hatch are minimal. This digital instrument screen you view through the three spoke steering wheel will be new to most brand regulars. A 5.5 inch color display with a digital speedo in the center. Above the big digits are small readouts for range, driving mode, uh, time and temperature. And below them, your selected audio station selection can display if you use these steering wheel buttons. 
flanking this middle part of the monitor is a battery charge meter on the right and a performance display on the left via which you can see whether the car is replenishing its energy or using various degrees of e-power. Mini strives to be premium these days and the camera design and trimming just about reflects that with decent build quality from the Oxford plant and above entry level trim embellishments like shiny piano black trimming for the fascia, the steering wheel and the doors and nice little touches like the multicolored ambient lighting that you'll notice in areas like these silver door catches. Using this overhead toggle switch the uh, shades provided can be varied through green, blue, purple, red, orange and yellow. The seats are better and more supportive than you'd usually find on a car of this size too, with pronounced side bolsters that hold you firmly in place through the corners. Characteristic toggle switches still feature, primarily here at the base of the centre stack, where this starter tab is flanked by others for altering regenerative braking and changing drive settings. Altering those settings will light up this central circular infotainment screen in various colours. The display is offered either in 6.5 inch or 8.8 inch form and works either by voice, by touching the screen or by using this lower iDrive style controller between the seats. Whatever your preference, you'll be navigating around a circular menu with nav, phone and audio options on the right and mini connected media options on the top left. That's for access to news and weather reports plus online searches and wiki local info. You'll most commonly though be using this My Mini bottom left hand section which is where you'll find driving information drive data, technology in action e-data and an area allowing you to plan charging times. There's smartphone mirroring too, though only with Apple CarPlay, not with Android Auto. What else? Well, the ergonomics aren't bad with all-round visibility aided by the slim window pillars. Cabin storage is reasonable too, though the door pockets are small and there's no overhead sunglasses compartment. On the plus side, you get a reasonable glove box, twin cup holders ahead of the gear stick, and uh, there's also a small cubby just ahead of that, which is clearly intended for your phone since USB points and a 12 volt port sit just above it. There's also a trinket tray between the seats and a ticket clip in the passenger sun visor. This central armrest has an integrated compartment, but most of the time you'll want it raised because when down, it rather gets in the way of both the gear stick and the infotainment system control dial. Time to take a look in the back. Pulling the seat back and forward in this three-door model isn't as easy as it ought to be. The seat slides out of your way when you activate this catch, but it won't slide back again to its previous position afterwards, so the driver will have to fumble around beneath the seat when he or she gets back behind the wheel. Let's duck below the low roof and see what things are like on the rear bench. Well, there's good and bad here. Despite the scalloped out seat backs, legroom remains very cramped indeed if there's an adult of more than average height in front of you. Most sports coupes we test have more knee space than this. It's some compensation though that you do at least get reasonable levels of head and elbow room. And it's a lot less claustrophobic back here than we'd expected it might be. Uh, these deep side windows help considerably with this issue, with armrests just below. Despite that, you still wouldn't want to be stuck here for a long journey. There's only room for two, of course, back here, so Mini has given this bench this neat raised centre section that holds you in place nicely through the corners. There's a centre cup holder plus separate cup holders in each of the side sections and seat back pockets too. These tiny side speakers are neat and you get overhead coat hooks too. We'll finish by taking a look in the boot. On a little three door mini hatch, you won't be expecting it to be very big and it isn't, but at least its capacity isn't compromised over that of the combustion model, which isn't always the case with EVs. Get over this rather high lip and you'll find it to be quite deep with a good square shape and 211 litres of capacity. 
Plus, it's actually quite a usable space thanks to this two-level adjustable height boot floor, which also has four silver tie-down points. If you need more room, pushing forward the 6040 split backrest frees up 731 litres of capacity. Now there are three spec levels, beginning with the standard level one trim, which at the time of this test in autumn 2020, commanded a lease price starting at 299 pounds per month, plus four and a half thousand pounds initial rental for a 48 month personal contract hire agreement, or a list price of 24,900 pounds after the 3,000 pound government plug-in car grant has been applied. Now, as we'll see in a moment, the range extends on through level two spec, which is what we have here, through to top level three trim. But by that point, you're gonna be spending around 31,000 pounds. So what kind of value proposition do these figures represent in the market for compact TVs? Let's take a look, quoting prices to you that already take into account subtraction of that government grant. Now, you'll need to bear a few things in mind if you're making class comparisons at this point. First, that this Mini is the only three-door model in the segment. That might be a problem for you, as might this car's restricted 140 to 145 mile WLTP rated driving range. Uh, city car shaped small EVs like the Volkswagen E-Up and the Seat Mi Electric, which cost from around £20,000, can better that by around 20 miles. And the new Fiat 500, which costs a couple of thousand pounds more than this Mini, gets up to around 200 miles. Super Mini sized EVs like Renault Zoe, Peugeot's E208 and Vauxhall's Corsa E cost from around £29,000 and offer much greater range capabilities in the 200 to 245 mile bracket. If you're interested in any of the small BEV models just mentioned, you probably won't like this Mini for the reasons already given. The brand is unrepentant, wanting this car to be small and quick to charge in keeping with its urban remit. Yes, you'll pay nearly as much here as you would for a more spacious super mini EV with a longer range, but in return, you'll get dinkier dimensions, sportier handling, and a much more fashionable look and feel. If these advantages chime with you, then the rival models you really ought to be considering against this full battery mini model are the two direct competitors that share its core objectives, its restricted range and its lifestyle remit. The Honda E costs from around £27,000, while the Mazda MX-30 costs from around £26,000. All three of these trendy EV models will have their own distinct following. And if you like the idea of a Mini, you'll probably accept no substitute for this one. If so, the deal might be sealed in Mini's favour by a generous standard spec. Is that what you get here? Let's see. Key across the range equipment features include auto transmission, of course, in an EV, the value of which you'll need to factor in if you're making comparisons with combustion engine super mini rivals. Plus LED lights, front and rear, metallic paint, your choice of 16 or 17 inch alloy wheel designs, LED front fog lights, auto headlights and wipers, and the no cost option of a contrast color roof. Inside, all variants get navigation, automatic dual zone air conditioning, and an infotainment system with Mini's suite of connected drive services plus Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring. Driving stuff includes performance control torque vectoring for extra traction through the turns, uh, there's cruise control, and a driving mode system with mid, sport, green, and green plus settings. All that comes with standard level one trim. If you can stretch up towards the 27,000 pound price point or add 30 pounds more on your monthly rental, the mid-range level two variant that we're trying here offers comfort access keyless entry, uh, power folding mirrors, uh, rear parking sensors, and a rear view camera. 
Uh, as for the inside features, well, level two spec in the cabin gets you cloth and leather look upholstery, piano black interior trim, front seat heating, a storage compartment jack, an interior lights pack, which gives you multicolored ambient lighting, a front center armrest, an anthracite headliner, and the various elements of the mini excitement pack, which includes uh, an LED ambient lighting ring around the center dash screen and projection of the mini logo on the ground on the driver's side as you open the door. At the top of the range, for a not insignificant £6,000 above the base bet price, lies the plushest Level 3 variant. Think around £31,000 to buy outright, or around £400 as a monthly rental price once you've paid that deposit. Now this flagship version comes with adaptive LED headlights featuring intelligent matrix technology that adapts the light beam to the road and surrounding vehicles. Plus there are more alloy wheel style options and a parking assistant that steers you into spaces with the aid of front parking sensors. Inside a level three variant, you'll find carbon black full leather upholstery, a panoramic glass roof, a head up display, a bespoke mini yours steering wheel in full stitched leather, uh, the navigation plus pack with its larger 8.8 .8 inch central infotainment screen and a Harman Kardon hi-fi system. Whichever Mini Electric derivative you choose, it'll come with the benefits of Mini Connected, which offers a wide range of intelligent e-drive services and apps. The setup's built around an integrated 4G SIM card and an app that you can download onto your smartphone. Once you've synced the system with your handset, you'll be able to do all kinds of things remotely. Uh, check your car's range and starting status, or start the charging process if you've left the car plugged in. You'll also be able to check for charging stations in your location, uh, precondition the cabin climate, or assess the driving efficiency of your last journey. Plus, of course, the connected setup will be able to do all the things that it can offer on any normal combustion mini model. So it can access destinations from your calendar, save their addresses onto the navigation system, advise you when it's time to leave for a journey and share your arrival time with people you nominate. And there's the usual remote services functionality too. So you'll be able to remotely view fuel levels, lock or unlock the doors and find your car if you've forgotten where you parked it. Mini Connected is the way the brand wants you to access online based services such as web radio and the use of social networks like Facebook, Twitter, Foursquare and Glimpse. And it's also the way that you'll be receiving RSS news feeds and entertainment features such as Deezer, Napster and TuneIn. Our favourite Mini Connected feature though is Find Mate. This option consists of tags with a Bluetooth tracking function that can be attached to frequently used objects and travel items like bags, cases and key rings. Should you ever lose a tagged item, its position uh, can not only be displayed on the car's dashboard screen but also on your handset via that Mini Connected smartphone What about options? Well, rather refreshingly on Mini, there aren't really any. Uh, the brand wants you to simply go up a trim level if you want more kit. Bear in mind that with base level one trim, you get a very restricted range of body colors, just moonwalk gray and the white silver finish that we have here. Across the range, you can request the no cost option of the energetic yellow detailing that features on this test car, which sees that shade applied to the front blade and the mirror caps. The main extra cost item you'll need, if you don't already have it, is of course a wall box charger for your garage. Now, there are two options here. You can have either a BP Charge Master home charge unit that has a charging capacity of up to seven kilowatts and costs around 600 pounds after subtraction of the available government OLEV grant or you could choose Mini's own Wallbox Connect package, which has a charging capacity of up to 22 kilowatts, and at the time of this test, cost 1,050 pounds after subtraction of that OLEV grant. 
On to safety and the level of possible provision that seems an awful long way from model founder Alec Isigonis' original thoughts on the subject back in the 60s. Asked about the crash worthiness of the Mini, he said, I make my cars with such good brakes and such good steering that if people get into a crash, it's their own fault. Well, thankfully, things have progressed a bit in the safety department since then, thanks to the incorporation of a range of so-called intelligent safety features, the primary one being front-end collision warning, Mini's autonomous braking system. Speed limit assist and speed warning also feature. If you want to go further, you'll need to have stretched at least to mid-range level two trim, which as mentioned earlier, gets the additional features of the brand's driving assistant pack, specifically three extra camera driven safety features. A rear end collision warning setup alerts you if you're about to get hit from behind, so you have a chance to take avoiding action. Traffic sign recognition, pictures speed signs as you pass and displays them on the dash and main beam assistant dips your headlights in the face of oncoming traffic at night. We should also mention the fact that regardless of spec, all mini electric variants get a range of more conventional safety features. There are anti-lock brakes, of course, with electronic brake force distribution to make them more effective and cornering brake control to help you through the turns so you're always primed for a swift stop. There's tire pressure monitoring, uh, fading brake support, and a useful brake drying function that will imperceptibly dab the discs in wet weather to keep them dry. There's also the usual stability control system and a DTC dynamic traction control setup that in poor conditions allows a bit of controlled slip at the drive wheel so that moving away on loose sand or deep snow can be a little smoother. If all of that isn't enough to avoid an accident, then Isofix child seat fastenings, a pedestrian friendly bonnet and twin front side and curtain airbags will all be welcome features. There's also an e-call intelligent emergency calling system. In the event of an accident, this setup automatically detects vehicle location and accident severity before contacting a call center to initiate fast and effective assistance, which could be a lifesaver. It's all a long way from the days of good Sir Alec. You might think, as we do, that the main issue here is driving range. Mini claims that this car will cover between 140 and 145 miles on the WLTP cycle. We've yet to come across anybody who's managed much more than 100 miles during real world driving in one. Mini bullishly says that this isn't a problem because a long driving range isn't really needed in an urban based car. And the brand points out that the average daily driving distance for a Mini customer is no more than 23 miles, about a fifth of its claimed range figures. Which is all well and good, but if our experience is anything to go by, you're still going to be struggling to go anywhere in this car that's much more than about 45 miles away from your starting point without either charging halfway or a severe bout of sweaty range anxiety towards the end of your journey home. These problems aren't unique to the Mini Electric, of course. Its two closest lifestyle oriented class rivals, the Honda E and the Mazda MX-30, also struggle with this issue. In fact, they do worse. The Honda E is WLTP rated at just 136 miles. For the Mazda MX-30, it's only 124 miles. In our market and model range section, we tried to give you some class perspective on this outside of the lifestyle small EV bubble that this Mini and the two rival models that we've just mentioned have tried to pioneer. To repeat, a cheaper city car sized EV like the Volkswagen E-Up will go around 170 miles on a single charge. The new Fiat 500 EV manages 199 miles. For a slightly more expensive super mini sized EV model like a Peugeot E208 or a Renault Zoe ZE50, the range is in the 200 to 245 mile bracket. 
but with the possible exception of the Fiat, cars like those simply don't have the pavement presence or driving appeal of this Mini. It, it all comes down to just how important that is to you. At least BMW Mini's decision to specify a relatively compact 32.6 kilowatt hour battery for this car means pretty quick charging times. Charging from empty with the typical 7.4 kilowatt wall box you'll need to install in your garage will take 3 hours and 12 minutes. It'd take 12 hours if you simply connect it to a domestic 2.3 kilowatt 3 pin plug. What about the public charging points the car's navigation system or the mini connected phone app can direct you to? There are about 8,000 locations around the UK. Well, uh, with a public AC charging 11 kilowatt point, charging would take two hours and 30 minutes. And using a public DC rapid charger, it'd take just 36 minutes. The charging plug is located above the right-hand rear wheel where the petrol filler would normally be. Mini reckons a typical electricity tariff would see you paying around four pence per mile to run this electric model, which is around two and a half to six times cheaper than an equivalent car with either a petrol or a diesel engine. The brand reckons a full charge, again on a typical electricity tariff, cost around £5.31. And of course, as with any EV, there's a zero emission CO2 figure, though of course the energy to drive this car has to cause pollution somewhere. This Mini has a well-to-wheel CO2 reading of 34 grams per kilometre. Obviously, to maximise driving range, the driver is going to have to play his or her part. If you keep the Mini driving mode system in either its green or green plus modes, that's going to help the latter setting particularly severely restricting throttle travel and the output of the climate system. And equally obviously you'll preserve more battery life if you maximise regenerative braking, which you can do by selecting high rather than low energy recovery via this toggle switch at the base of the centre stack. You'll want to keep an eye on the performance display drive meter to the left of the instrument binnacle screen which shows your current e-power use or regenerative charging status. And on two sections of the My Mini part of the central infotainment screen. Driving information shows e-consumption in miles per kilowatt hour and technology in action includes what's called a minimalism analyzer which grades your driving out of five stars for anticipation and acceleration. Plus there's an auxiliary consumers section which shows the draw on the battery by the climate fan and if fitted the heated seats. You can also use a section of the mini connected app to assess the driving efficiency of your latest journey. What else? Well, as with any small EV, you'll pay no VED road tax. And depreciation? Well, you'd normally expect that on a Mini, residual values would be quite strong. But how will this particular BEV variant fare on the used market in three or four years' time, when battery technology will have advanced so far that a range of not much more than 100 miles will seem very low indeed? You have to wonder. Insurance groups are the same for the Level 1 and Level 2 variants, uh, 22E, but are rated at Group 23E for a Level 3 derivative. Mini itself offers fully comprehensive insurance, but you might find that your own broker can improve on the premiums that your dealer can offer. As expected, there's the normal 3-year unlimited mileage warranty, and the battery has its own 8-year or 100,000 mile warranty. Most customers here will want to buy into the provided Mini Electric Pay Monthly Service Plan. £10 a month covers you for servicing, £20 a month covers you for servicing with either tyres or brake pads, and £30 a month covers you for servicing with both tyres and brake pads. Job done. The original Mini, designed by Sir Alec Isagonis, was born out of the Suez crisis, oil shortage and the demand for affordable motoring. The first cars rolled off the line at Oxford in the summer of 1959, and so began a global success story which has spanned six decades. As the world faces new environmental, social and economic challenges, so perhaps the arrival of this Mini Electric is just as opportune. 
We have some reservations about its rather limited driving range capability, but if you're going to be regularly town-based anyway, that may not be too much of an issue. And this car's spirited handling will make up for much. Sir Alec Isagonis would have been fascinated by this model. Mini is crossing its fingers that you will be too.